The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, how great we are to teach the angels, being, we being the university, the church. The pastor, teacher, equipped with the work of a special ability to teach, have to rightly divide the word of the Lord with the proper exegesis, categorization, and isagogical study of the subject through the proper dispensing technique of dispensations. We learn the transfigured saints in the Matthew chapter 12, our Lord was transfigured before them, the transformation, metamorphomai, and his face did shine as a sun, and his raiment as white as the light. The word transfigured is from a Greek word made up of two words, one word referring to the outward expression one gives to his inmost true nature, the other signifying a change of activity. We could translate, his mode of expression was changed before them. That is what our Lord's usual mode of expression while on earth in his humiliation was that of a servant. He came in Mark 10.45 not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for money. But now that usual mode of expression was changed. Our Lord now gave expression to the glory of his deity. The word transfigured here means that he changed his outward form of expression, namely from that of a servant to that of a deity. We have in in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, another Greek word of the direct opposite meaning, namely the act of changing the outward expression of that which inwardly remains the same, that outward expression not being representative of that person in most nature. Satan, his false apostles and ministers assume an outward expression which does not correspond to their true natures before masquerading, and that is what the Greek word means as an angel of light. Satan Satan gave outward expression to his inmost nature, but in order to mislead the human race and gain followers, he had to pose as an angel of light. He changed that outward expression which was expressive of his inmost nature and assumed another which did not correspond to it. Therefore, Satan masqueranders as an angel of light, whereas he is all the while an angel of darkness. This is metaschematizoa, but we have metamorphomai. Every believer being designed to be metamorphomai and not in heaven. The greater our failure to realize the simple truth will lead you to a life that is absolutely light. And in today's Christendom, including the pastors, many of them are working out in Second Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, that which is not from the inner one, but they are changing outwardly in the hypocritical manner to tell what is the expression of their inmost nature. And though they think they are an angel of light, but they are getting masquerading like Satan, and but in return in virginal, they are still becoming the angel of darkness. It is really a great pain for us to note that though the word of the Lord has been given for them to change to the glory of Lord by neglecting the word, stealing the words of Jehovah, and really telling lies and compromising the properties, this men they have come around with the reality which is not at all a reality. And that's what it really hurts for us to note. And that's what it really tells for us to be understandable to the reality of the word of the Lord which has to be number one for us in this church age therefore in Romans 12 2 we have both the words used Paul exhorts the saints not to be conformed to this world here he uses the word found in Corinthian passage of 2nd 11 
13 through 15. Christians must not change their outward expression from that of a true expression of their inmost natures to an assumed expression not true of their new regenerated inmost being. That assumed expression patterned after the world. He exhorts them instead of to be transformed and here we have the same Greek word which is used in the Matthew passage and translated transfigure. Saints are to change their outward expression from that which was true of them before salvation. When they gave expression to what, what was in their indwelling sinful nature to an expression of their inmost regenerated being, then they would be transfigured saints. Therefore, dear brethren, we have the expression to what was in their indwelling sinful nature to an expression to their inmost regenerated being to be generated by the power ministry of life God the Holy Spirit. That would be called for them as transfigured saints. And this transfigured saints is the ministry of a true pastor teacher to train them up into the reality of Bible doctrine. And furthermore, Paul exhorts the saints not to assume as an outward expression the fashion, habits, the speech expressions, and artificially of this evil age, thus hiding that expression of themselves which should come from what they are intrinsically as children of God. How saints sometimes like to have just a dash of the world about them so as not to appear too unworldly. How a coat of worldliness can cover up the Christ within, but instead saints are to be transformed, that is, give expression of what they really are, partakers of this divine nature indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They are to do so by having their inward life renewed by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may be seen. Thus they will be transfigured saints. And as our Lord was seen by the disciples, shining, resplendent in the glory of his deity, so the saints will shine with the heavenly radiance pervading their thoughts, words, and deeds, even on their earthly pilgrimage, lightening many a lost wanderer home amid the darkening shadows of this age by the walk that is pertaining to the pure ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, dear brethren, we have been called in the polity of privileges to show forth the reality of the world, that great word which has been given for us, the great responsibility that has been laid down upon us, and without which it is highly impossible for us to please the Lord. You have to know that you are being a polity of privileged one. You have to know that you have been given this great work, and you have to work it out to the praise of His glory. Which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and for the pastor teacher, Kerisothon Lagan, herald the word in season, out of season, because of the Diamatruma witnesses, the indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and it is our great privilege for us to note that this Bible in our hands is our witnesses, and we have the witnesses being our hearers. If there are no witnesses, dear brethren, do not worry, besides nature, that time and the cost will be. Besides nature, by time and the cost. So do not worry about the softies. Preach the word as it is. Tell the reality. Don't steal the words of Lord. Go for proper exegesis. Go for proper isochronics. Go for proper categorization of the subject. And learn the word so that the truth can be said. Dear brethren, we shall come back and answer Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that God guide the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.